What's up, welcome back. In this episode, you'll learn how to add drag and drop file upload to a text area for editing Markdown so that you can upload your images super easily. So stick around and we're gonna dive into that. Before I go too far though, I really have to acknowledge Jeremy Smith here. So go over and follow Jeremy Smith Co on Twitter. He wrote up this blog post that was super helpful, very simple to follow. So I will link to the blog post and Jeremy's Twitter. So go follow Jeremy. So the way that this works is we're going to have a stimulus controller that listens to a couple of different events. One is a drop and one is paste. And then we're going to use active storage direct uploader to upload those files to S3 in this case. And then we'll update the markdown with our little embedded markdown image thing. So basically the way that images work is you're going to have a exclamation point in the front and then some alt text here. So this is going to be your alt text. And then you'll have some image if it's local or if you have an image in the public directory, you could do something like image.png or something. So this is the markdown format for an image. But what I want to be able to do is just grab an image directly from, from my finder and drop it in. And I want that to upload the image to S3 and then add the text into the markdown field. This is how the GitHub issue editor works. And so this is something that we want to add to my personal site here for managing articles. First things first is we need to make sure that we have active storage set up and working as expected. So in config storage.yaml, I'm going to come in here and enable Amazon. I want to use Amazon S3. In this project, I happen to already have my access key and secret access key set. There's another video on this channel showing how to set up active storage and how to get uploading working. So for now, I'm just going to leave those for later. But the bucket that I want to upload these to, I just called it CJAV Dev. And what I want to do now, go over to our development environment. So I'm going to go over to development.rb and make sure that our storage settings are going to use Amazon. So when you're just practicing and playing around locally, you'll usually want to write local files. So actually, let's start off with local and we can come back later and switch it to Amazon. OK, the next thing we want to do is we want to use a stimulus controller for managing that input box or at least parts of our form. So we're going to say Rails G stimulus and we're going to call this markdown upload. So this is going to be a markdown upload controller. And that should have updated our manifest and it should have also created this markdown controller JavaScript file for us. So let's open this thing up. And now we're gonna be able to use this data dash controller attribute on the text area input with this markdown dash upload. When it's connected, we'll just console.log connected. And the other thing that we care about is making sure that it was added to our registrations. This was the manifest updating. And yeah, so this is what happened as like the second part of generating this controller is it added this like manifest thing here. There's a couple different ways to load your, your stimulus controllers, but this seems to work just fine. So what we can do now is go over to our article form .html.arb, and where our text area is for our body. I want to add some data attributes here. So the first one is going to be data dash controller markdown upload. Now, when we reload this page over here, we should see in the console that it was connected. So here we see connected. So that's cool. So now our markdown controller is being connected. Now what we want to do is start triggering when things are dropped or pasted into this markdown or into this, this text area. So the next thing we want to do is say data action is equal to drop on the markdown upload. And when that happens, call upload or drop upload, I think drop upload. Okay. So we need to make a method on the controller called drop upload. So we'll go back to our upload controller and we'll make a new method here called drop upload. That is going to take in an event and we want to prevent the default for that event. Cause usually when you drop something onto the page, it ends up like just viewing it in another pane. This is actually getting pretty close to what we want to do. But for now, we're just going to say e dot prevent default. And we're going to say console dot log, I don't know, uploading files. Okay. So let's just refresh our page here and see what happens when we try to drop something in there now. So we're just going to drop this Twitter logo in there. And now we see this uploading files printed out to the console. All right, great. 
So the next step here is that we want to actually use the direct upload class that is available through the active storage NPM module. So this Rails active storage gives us this direct upload class that we can then use to upload. So here we can create a new upload given the file and some URL, and that will go through the process of uploading. Now the URL that's right here, this is the direct upload URL that is the URL that active storage is giving us when we want to make direct uploads. So we're going to use a, an ERB method to pull that out and inject it into our text area. So this is something that we want to like actually pass in our text area here. So we're going to say data markdown upload URL value is going to be equal to, and then there's this Ruby method that we can call that will give us back the, the direct uploads URL. And that is from active storage. So that's going to allow us to use this value inside of our controller. So we'll go back to our controller here. We want to have static values. And the one we care about is this URL that's going to be available. So we have the first thing that we need, and that is the direct upload URL. The second thing we need is the file. So we're going to get the file from the inputs that are given to us on drop. So when we receive that drop event, the event is going to have this data.transfer.files and we can iterate over each of those files and call upload. So it's possible we get several files dropped onto us. And so then what we're going to want to do is say iterate over the files that were given to us. So e.data.transfer.files should have all of the files that we want to when we are uploading. So again, we need to import direct upload from Rails Active Storage. Now, as soon as I save this file, the, my server is going to crash probably because I don't think I have this npm install. I need to add this Rails Active Storage package. Okay. And now we should be able to say bin dev. And all right. So now when we refresh the page over here. Okay. Let's see what we get now. So if we drag on a file and drop it, now we see this file list. So it has one file. So the zeroth index here, the object is of type file. It has the name, the size, and it's an image and all this, all these details. So we're going to take that file and upload it directly to, in, in the local case, we're going to directly upload it to our a local running file server. But in, in practice, we're going to switch it to S3 and that'll upload directly to S3, give us back some URLs that we can use. Okay, so the next step here is that we want to take these files, we want to iterate over each of them and call upload on them. So we're going to just say something like array.from for each file, and then we want to call, in fact, we can just call like this upload file. And here we can say upload file. I don't know if we're going to need access to this inside of here, but we'll come back and modify the binding if so. All right, so this says that we're going to try uploading all the files. So for each file that we want to, that we get, we're going to create that upload object, and that's going to be a new direct upload. And the first object is going to be the file, and the second object is going to be this.url value. So we do, in fact, need bind this. Okay. We're calling bind this so that the function that we're passing into for each is explicitly bound to this instance of the Markdown Upload controller. Another way that we could have written this would have been just something like for each file, this.upload file, and then execute this with passing an F. And by doing it this way, we continue to maintain the binding of this. So two different ways of doing that. Okay, we'll just clean this up a hair and let's take a look. All right, so back over in the active storage documentation, you'll see that it has this upload.create method that takes a callback that will resolve with an error or a blob. So we can grab this upload call and let's just drop this, let's just drop this inside of our function here. So if if there was an error, we will log out the error. So we'll just say something like alert error. I don't know what the shape of that error is going to look like, but because this is just something that's used by me, that should be fine. Okay, so then the next thing we want to do is we're going to get a few different pieces of information off of this blob. So let's console.log the blob, console.dir the blob, and we'll just use that for now to see what we're getting back from the blob data. So we'll come back over here to our application, drop in an image, 
And this is our blob data that we're getting back. So we're gonna have this signed globally unique identifier. We have the size, a checksum. We know that it's an image. And here we have the file name, et cetera. So we can use this information to then construct a URL that we wanna go and see this file that we uploaded. Again, if we look at the documentation, we see this blob.signedID and active storage is gonna give us some URLs. So here's an example. It's gonna be like slash rail slash active storage slash blobs, then the signed ID and then the file name. So if we just copy this and take a look at what we get back here. So let's paste this in localhost 3000 slash rails active storage. So right now that's not gonna do anything. But now if we grab the signed ID for the blob, so we'll copy that and we want to replace the signed ID in the URL. That should give us back getting. And then we also, I think, need the file name. So we'll just grab the file name here. So it's going to be like the Twitter logo. And if we hit enter, now we see this image. So notice that this is hosted at localhost 3000. Eventually, we're going to upload that to S3. But if we wanted to, we could say bang Twitter logo is our alt text. And then we could paste in that URL. And if we said submit, now we have this blog post here that has the image that is embedded in it. So this is working. The next step is just to construct the URL here, given the signed ID from the blob and then the file name for the blob so that we can construct some sort of URL that looks like this. And we wanna do that client side. So here we're gonna do something like um, markdoc or mark to markdown URL. And we're gonna take in the blob and we're gonna return that URL. Yeah, so it's gonna be that exactly. Okay, thank you, Copilot. All right, so if we were to just console dot, yeah, so the other thing that we need to do here is if it's an image, we want this exclamation point, but if it's other types of files, then we, we don't. So for now, we'll just assume that they're all images. And then if you wanted to handle stuff that was not images, you would need to figure out the content type of the file that's being uploaded and then decide whether or not you want to show the exclamation point. And then finally, what we want to do is figure out where this range is of selected text. And then we need to go through and, and actually like insert into the right spot in our text editor. So we're gonna set this range from start to end to be the value from our markdown blob, okay? And again, like in this example, it does show you how to check if it's an image and if it is an image, figure out how to do the prefix thing. So head over, take a look at the blog post. We're gonna use selection start and selection end. Let's grab this, grab reference to this text area. So it's just called body, let's see, const body. It's document dot get element by ID body. Okay, so this is our body. Now, if we said something like body dot select selection start, that gives us the character where the selection starts. So this is the thirty eighth character in is the that R, and then we have selection end. That's going to be where our selection stopped. And so if when we're dropping something in here, so let's say, let's actually make this a little different. We'll do, so let's try to drop it like right here. And then we will also console.log this.element.selection start and selection end. And let's try to drop in this image again right here. Oh, you know what? We need to re refresh. Yeah. Okay, drop it in. Okay, 242 and 242. So it must have added it directly at the end of this stuff here, but that's fine. So that's gonna drop the image in between. So if we tried to do it here, okay, yeah. So then that would have ended up in between. So 162 and 162, cool. And if we did it after 10, let's see what we get here. There we go, 11 and 11. So that's where the object would have landed, okay. So now what we want to do is say, we want to set the text value or in that range. So starting from 11 to 11, we want to insert some text. And that text is going to be that URL constructed from the markdown URL. So we can say set range text, this.element.set range text from, this is going to be our like text. And then we're going to have selection start, selection end, 
and that should be good. So here we want to pass in our markdown and that should work, I think. So let's come back over here, refresh the page and highlight all this test. And then let's actually test more and say that we happened to drop an image in between the two. All right, cool. So that uploaded the image and it injected it directly into our markdown and it has the correct format and everything. So if we say submit, now we have test at the top, we have test more at the bottom and the image is uploading. So another thing that I do all the time when I'm writing these articles is I'll take a snapshot and add it to the clipboard. You can do, I don't know, alt control shift four or something. And let's say you take a screenshot. Now that like gets added to the clipboard. And if I paste, I want it to, I want to be able to like command V to paste the image in here and have that also upload. So in order to do that, we needed to add a second sort of flow here. So right now we have our drop upload. Let's also add our paste upload. That's going to be pretty similar. E prevent default. And eventually we are going to upload some files, but the API is just slightly different. So paste upload, we're going to check to make sure that there is something on the clipboard. So we're going to check to see if there's something on the clipboard. And then otherwise we're going to go through the clipboard data dot files. And for each of those, we will again call dot for each and we'll upload that. So this is actually called E. Okay. So now we're going to go through each of those files that are on the clipboard, call upload file for each one. And that should end up inserting it the same way that we want that we want that to happen over here. Oh, you know what we didn't do? We didn't wire up this paste upload method. Okay. So we got to go to our article form and in our data action, we need paste to the markdown upload controller. And we're going to call this paste upload methods. We'll save that, refresh the page. And let's take a screenshot again and paste it in. Boom. Look at that. Okay. So let's see if that's actually the pasted one and not something else. Nice. Okay. So this is the screenshot that we just took. So that is now being uploaded locally. Cool. So then, yeah, the rest is just a matter of going to, if we were to go to development here and where we have this set up for local, we can switch this to Amazon. And again, we would want to also go to production and go to our storage and make sure that we are using Amazon in production. Okay. Refresh this and we'll go back to slash edit and let's just remove all of these. And we'll say, did this upload to Amazon and we will drop in another picture here. So yeah, let's use a headshot. Sure. Okay. Submit. All right. Uploaded. And now if we look at the, yeah. So if we look at the element here, you'll notice that the URL is still going to this local storage, whatever URL. And this is out. Oh, it's technically still on disk. Okay. So that did not work. So we got to restart our server, I think. So let's restart the server, come back over here, delete. We'll go back over here, edit. And let's drop something else. You might be wondering why I'm typing edit in, and that's because I just haven't added a button to go to edit. Cause it's just me again, that's using this form. So let's say submit. All right. Did this upload to Amazon because it's like lagged when it was loading. I think it might've actually worked. So now if we look at this image, all right. So now you notice that it's, this one is hosted on Amazon AWS.com. So now it's the direct upload URL is different rather than being for our local disk storage. Now it's uploading it to Amazon S3 and working just the same. And we have the same sort of tooling and functionality. So this is pretty fun. This is going to speed up my process so much before I don't, I'm embarrassed to say that I was just like manually adding <laughs> images to my public directory and then linking to them in different blog posts. But I want to add much more, like a lot more images and screenshots and detail in future blog posts, and this will make it so much faster. So thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.